Good evening, I'm John Barton and welcome again to Business Week. The past week's news has been dominated by reshuffling in the media industry. On Monday, the investment arm of the shopping centre conglomerate, Westfield, dramatically lifted its television interests, buying the Channel 10s in Sydney and Melbourne for $842 million. As the shock waves reverberated around the country, in Sydney, a Senate committee began hearings on regional television. While on the share market, Northern Star Holdings, partly owned by Westfield, is emerging as a rising star. Brian Frith will have all the developments later in the program. Over the last two years, booming share markets have attracted many punters, making brokers feel like bookmakers at the track. Well now, one of Australia's greatest racehorse trainers and buyers, Tommy Smith, plans to combine his horses and the share market with the public float of his stable, Tullock Lodge. Tonight, we look at the $20 billion racing industry and the floating of a public racing company. It'll be one of the greatest things ever happened because um, I'll be buying more horses and better type of horses. Tommy Smith's company is the first of its type in an industry that can be lucrative for the brave and wealthy, but for the small player, it's very risky. Just remember that today you might have a, a champion, tomorrow you've got nothing. The Horse Float, a report from Nigel McCarthy on the listing of shares in a company owned by one of the country's greatest trainers, Tommy Smith. Also tonight, the best trans-Tasman corporate performer for 20 years, Ron Briley. Investors who originally bought into his companies for a few thousand pounds are now multi-millionaires, and the growth is not expected to stop, as Briley's industrial equity is taking on the world. Then, an exclusive profile of yet another Western Australian entrepreneur, Laurie Wilson, who's made his fortune from car parking. Um, I have certainly put my heart and soul into my business career, but I've done that as a balance to my family life. And I think it's that balance, that necessity for me to balance my family life with my business life that has um, prevented me from being a Bond or a Holmes Accord. But at the same time, I have, in my opinion, been ultra successful. Laurie Wilson is now expanding into the entertainment industry and he plans to bring a collection of the world's greatest performers to Australia. Well, we sensed it and um, it's a very, very exciting industry to be in. First of all, it's terribly fragmented, fragmented and as a result, we believe we can coordinate the industry and make a very, very highly successful public company out of being in this industry. Parking Zone, a profile of a man who's taken car parking across Asia and now looks set to drive into entertainment, a report from John Hosking. We'll also update two recent stories on the Bank of America and the battle for the mineral water market. All that will come when Business Week returns after the break. As a journalist, what impresses me most about the news team at Network 10 is its ability to bring Sydney the complete news. And that means all the major news stories of the day and the people who are making them. And because they don't do things by halves, you'll get all the news, everything you need to know. I'm looking forward to every minute. Sydney turns to the team on 10. Eyewitness News. Now there's only one major car rental company left in Australia that's still Australian. No, not them, nor them, which leaves budget to take the world head on. With world beating rates, ideas and service, we're winning here and now we're winning overseas too. Budget, the Australian car rental company that drives the Aussie dollar further. This is Henry. Best idea this company's ever had. Even if he did try to weld the chairman's tie. But of course, not all new ideas are good ones. Now they're talking about putting our wages directly into our accounts. I can see problems. We all like cash. And who wants to spend their lunch hours waiting in a bank queue? The cash pay system is working perfectly well. <laughs> Henry's on the blink again. Cash. It's the only thing you can count on. What we call national at home, we call Panasonic at the office. What we call national at home, we call Panasonic at the office. What we call national, we call Panasonic. Panasonic, office automation. Reception hold the light, please. 
What happened to that pearl? It's the telephone. <gasps> You've got a real problem with your railing telephones. It's really playing havoc with the business that you own. If you're looking for a telephone, then take it from me. Contact Ericsson, the people to see. There's lots of different kinds, to the 10,000 lines. Business telephones are their speciality. If you're needing a telephone, then get it from Ericsson. They've got them all, big or small. Business telephones for every company. The only real alternative is to phone up Ericsson's. The alternative to telecom is Ericsson Business Phones.